like life and death, moon and sun, it's sure to each the piper comes. And while God and goddess give for free, down below there will be fees. Despite perfect love and perfect trust, there's no way around it, cash is a must. We've sought within, but come up short, so we come to thee, your help to court. If you would aid this temple's life, a three dollar donation would be nice. Remember well that gifts when sent return threefold of what was spent. But if you can't, well, blessed be. We shall survive, so mote it be. Merry mate, this is Lady Nefties of Universal Pagan Temple. Today I'm going to tell you about how to make and use crystal grids. So, how do you go about creating crystal grid? Well, first and foremost, you have to decide what you want your crystal grid to be used for. So, whatever purposes in life that you need a crystal grid for, whether it be protection, love, wealth, or even for sleep, calming energy in our home, or even destroying or sending away negative energy. You could do all of these things, and even more, with crystal grids. So now that you've decided that you want to make your crystal grid, you have to decide what type of crystal grid you want to use for what magical intention. And then, what you would do is you would clear off a space where you could place this crystal grid. It could be anywhere that you want in your home, and if you do understand feng shui, you could even put it in the energy centers related to your magical purpose in your home. But. Make sure that it is out of the way of pets or small children that will want to pick up the crystals because this would uh, destroy your crystal grid magic. Your next step then would be to select crystals for your magical intention for your crystal grid. So this right here is a protection crystal grid. Now you don't have to use these exact crystals that I have here, but all of these crystals here are meant for protection magic. So in the middle here, I have a jet, and then I have clear crystal points. And then in between each, I have a small garnet chip. And then at the end of each clear crystal port point, I have a tiger's eye. So the jet, the garnet, and the tiger's eye are all used in protection magic. So now that you've selected your crystals that you want to use for your magical intention, you want to purify them and cleanse them before use. The best way I suggest is to smudge them, which will not damage your crystals, unlike using water to cleanse your crystals, or even bathing them in sunlight will damage some crystals. And also salt can be used to cleanse some crystals, but it can damage some other types of crystals, such as malachite. You don't want to mix malachite and salt because it'll damage the malachite. And malachite is poisonous <laughs> if, if you uh, touch the dust and put it in your mouth. Don't do that. Another way to cleanse your crystals is to use moonlight if it's the full moon. So if you're planning on making your crystal grid, you might want to take some time to see if it's close to a full moon where you could charge and cleanse your crystals. So your next step in making a crystal grid is to charge your crystals with your intent. So you would take each of your crystals and hold them in your hands and visualize the crystals doing their job, whether it be for your protection, for drawing love, or attracting wealth, etc. So after you have cleansed and charged your crystals, you will want to cast a magical circle. Now I have a video on this on week 15 of Wicca A Year and a Day in Magic that you can look up if you don't know how to cast a magical circle already. And what you do after you've done casting your magical circle, you want to activate your grid. So you can say your intention out loud saying, I wish protection to come to me, to my loved ones, and to my household. Something along that line. And you could draw the energy from the main crystal outwards with your wand or even your finger or athame. Right here I have a lapis lazuli wand. 
but if you don't have crystal wand, that's okay too. And this crystal grid is activated. Now here I have another crystal grid set up for emotional calm in your home. So here in the middle I have a large rose quartz followed by two clear crystal quartz on either side and top to bottom I have two amethyst points. And then those amethyst points are pointing to some satellite as well as the clear crystal quartz points on the side. They are also pointing to two smaller solidites. And then in between those points, I have smaller rose quartz crystals uh, pointing towards amethyst. So this entire grid is dedicated to emotional calmness and it can also be used for sleep. Now, how do you decide to lay out your crystal grid? As in, what type of pattern should you use? Well, you could use sacred geometry, or you could even copy from nature. Nature is the greatest artist after all. So, you would just set up a pattern that would resemble a geometric shape or even a flower. This pattern right here is a pretty basic one, and it does kind of resemble a flower or even a geometric shape. And you can even find these geometric grids online you can use for crystal magic. That'll make it very easy. Um, there's already points on it that are kind of labeled out where you would put your crystals for use in your crystal grids. Now say you don't have access to buying larger crystals. Well, if you don't, you could still use smaller crystals, such as these smaller crystal tumbled citrines or tiger size, and your crystal grid will just work as well as if you had these larger crystal points here. This is a very large natural citrine here. Now you can even incorporate symbols into your crystal grid. You could either have them on a sheet of paper and you could put it under your larger middle crystal or you can have them spread out throughout your crystal grid being a part of the grid itself. So see here, I've got a small stone with a pentacle on it and I'm going to put this citrine on top of it. So there we go. And so this grid is to attract wealth and prosperity, but also with a little bit of protection there as well. Now hopefully this gives you a good idea on layer start in making your crystal grids. So happy gridding and until next time, blessed be! Merry meet! I'm Lady Nefties of Universal Pagan Temple. I'm here today to tell you about our new Patreon campaign and why you should become patrons of ours. Now, at Universal Pagan Temple, we have a YouTube channel where we teach about paganism and Wicca, and we also hold rituals that we film. Universal Pagan Temple's YouTube channel already has a 52-week course on Wicca called Wicca A Year and a Day in Magic. This course takes the beginner in Wicca all the way through their complete year and the day. Alright, so I have dressed all three candles and we are now ready for a candle spell. So you dress the candles and you set up your altar space. Um, and of course you cast your circle, cast your circle thrice about to keep all evil spirits out while you are casting your spells. Merry meet and welcome to week 15 of Wicca A Year and Day Magic. I'm Lady Nefties and this week we'll find, finally be learning how to cast a circle. Now you cast... Not only do we teach about paganism and Wicca here on our channel, but we also perform the rituals. So for those who are halfway across the world, or they are not able to attend a pagan ritual in their local area, or they're afraid to come out of the broom closet, they could join us for our rituals on our channel. I consecrate thee in the names of the god and the goddess, bidding you welcome to this third temple. 
I consecrate thee in the names of the god and the goddess, bidding you welcome to this their temple. Whenever ye have need of anything, once in a month, then better it be when the moon is full, then ye shall assemble in some secret place and adore the spirit of me, who am queen of all witches. There ye shall- And not only do we have ritual and educational videos, but we also explore the funner side of Wicca and paganism. We have a new video series called Tolkien Paganism, where I explore the pagan side of J.R.R. Tolkien's books and the movies. So we can see here the bee. It looks like a bee to you if you're not familiar with the runes. The bee stands for burglar, but it is also in the Elder Thufark. It's the Burkano rune, which is... Now, while the god and goddess give for free, down below there will be fees. And while we love to teach for free, without donations, Universal Pagan Temple will cease to be. But if you decide to become a patron of ours, we'll be able to make more videos with better and more information and also better quality videos. And Gregory and I will be able to take more time out to answer your questions, whether you be a beginner, an intermediate, or an expert in paganism, wicca, or witchcraft. Now, with the donations that we receive from patrons here, we will be able to move towards our ultimate goal here, which is to have a physical temple, where we will be able to hold a hand fasting, a requiem, or a wickening, and we'll be able to hold public rituals such as sabbats and espots, and also we'll be able to teach in public, and also it would be a meeting place for Wiccans and Pagans in that community. Now, I look forward to being able to improve the job that I do through the patronage that, if you are so generous enough, to support us here at Universal Pagan Temple. Now, until next time, blessed be.